is Todd Norian, and I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga. Welcome to Asana Spotlight. Please share this so people can stay centered in the storm, calm in the chaos. That's really what yoga is about, to stay grounded, to really be yourself in life. And uh, okay, so today's asana is Nataraj Asana. Nataraja means dancer. This is the dancer pose, and it comes from Shiva Nataraja, which means Lord of the dance. And Shiva Nataraja is the dancing Shiva who's dancing inside of a circle of grace, of all possibilities. You can see over here, um, this is an image, a statue of the Nataraja. And so he represents freedom as well as embodiment at the same time. So uh, he's, he's completely free um, and we're every aspect of the statue. So when you look at these uh, different statues to really understand the symbolism is that we, we embody the whole thing. So as free as he is, he's standing on one leg. He's holding up the entire universe on one leg and his foot is on the uh, back of a little creature called Apasmara Purusha, which is the imp of forgetfulness. It's really the embodiment of the ego, the embodiment of our limitations, and how interesting that we're both the ego and we're both the freedom of the dance. Shiva is telling us that life is meant to be a dance, not a dirge. So, you know, why is Nataraja dancing? Well, for the play of it, for the joy of it, because he can. And he's saying, like, stop trying to solve the problem of life because life is not a problem to be solved. And so if there's no problem to be solved, what are we doing here? And it's to be more playful, to savor, to have the experience we're having. And it's a very powerful teaching that we are both free and limited. And each one has a blessing. So freedom, the blessing of freedom is that we're free to choose. We're never stuck. We're always, all possibilities are available to us at all times. We just simply need to see them. And then, but we forget. You know, we forget that we are free. We forget that we're part of this divine uh, aspect. And so forgetfulness is not something bad, but it's seen here as the blessing of forgetfulness. And why is forgetfulness a blessing? Because if you never forgot, you would never have the joy of remembering again. And so in that way, we have freedom as the ego, freedom as our individual self and freedom as our free, uh, you know, open being. So the Nataraja is free and he's in movement, constant motion. He's a dancer, of course, so there's movement, but he's also stable at the same time. He's telling us that in order to be free, you have to become stable first and that you're as stable in the world as you are in the unknown. So it's really a great teaching about how to find your center, even amidst chaotic and when we're not sure and when we're confused and all that. So we have to draw into the place in the center, which is always the heart. All right, so this is a very challenging pose and there's lots of variations of Nataraja. Um, and we're gonna do sort of like the simple uh, sort of first level variation and we'll use the wall. So we have to open our body a bit because if we just jump into this pose cold, we could uh, actually it's almost impossible to do because it takes a little bit of heat and a little bit of flexibility. So um, join me. Let's come up to standing. We'll do a few warm ups and then we'll go right in, into the pose. Come to the front of your mat, stand with your feet hip distance apart, face the short end of your mat. Palms in front. In order to be free, we have to get stable first. So lift your toes. Hug your leg muscles in toward the midline. Even press your palms together. Lengthen your sides. Take the head of your arm bones back. Thigh bones back, tail in. Now from your pelvic core, root down through your feet into the earth. And from your pelvic core, rise up. Take some deep breaths, stand strong in Tadasana pose, where you are grounded and free at the same time, free and stable at the same time. And then inhale, sweep your arms out to the side and up. 
and exhale, fold forward, lead with your heart and bow. Keep your legs stable now and freely lift your heart forward halfway. And then exhale, fold, where freedom and stability come together. Inhale, freedom, exhale, stable. One more, inhale, heart forward. And then exhale, take your left foot back into lunge. From your pelvis now, push the left heel back and the right knee forward. Lower your left knee down to the floor and twist right hand to the right leg. Deep twist. Exhale, release, and then step your back foot in a little bit. Straighten your right leg and isometrically pull back with your right heel. Pull back. Take your left hip forward a bit. Part of what's needed in Nataraja, uh, Natarajasana is to get the hamstrings to open up. And the hamstrings are usually very stable. It's just a kind way of saying tight, at least mine are. So we do have to introduce some freedom into the tightness there to be able to achieve the pose. So pull back, take the right thigh back more and more and more. Exhale and bow. Enjoy the stretch. Step back, downward facing dog pose and then lunge your left foot forward, hug to the middle from your pelvis, push right heel back and the left shin forward. Lower your right knee down, twist left, left hand on the left leg. When you twist, can you lengthen your spine more? That's it. Take the left shoulder back. Stabilize your legs. So just scissor your legs into the middle. That's, that's the, the foundation there. And then with freedom, lift your heart. And the more stable you get with your legs, the more freedom in the heart, the more you can twist. Exhale, release. Now left leg straight, step your right foot forward a couple of inches. Turn your right foot out and then scissor your leg. Just pull back with your left leg. Draw your right hip forward so that the right and left hips face square to the front. And bow. When you're too stable, it does turn into rigidity. So that's partly what goes on with, with hamstrings. We get rigid. Then we're a little bit like a mule. You know, we get really stubborn and stuck in life. So Breathe, let's get some freedom and stretch the hamstrings. Exhale, release, go back into downward dog. Bend your knees, spin your thighs in and lift your sitting bones way up high. Get a low back curve. Pull up from your hands to your heart. Stabilize your shoulders, lift the armpits up, but then melt the heart freely and find the place in the middle. You know, when you're too free, we get ungrounded and spacey. We lose our focus and we're much less productive. And how that can look in a pose like downward dog pose is collapsed shoulders. So stabilize your shoulders, lift your armpits up, maintain the stability. Nataraj is saying, if you wanna get free, go for stability first, then melt the heart. Head of the arm bones up, heart soft. Then from your heart, push down through your hands and from your heart, root the heels back, press the base of your shins back. Deep stretch. You should feel this in your ankles, calves, and hamstrings, most of all. Perfect. Inhale, right leg up and go to wild dog. Bend your right knee and lift your knee up. Take the base of your left shin back. A much bigger hamstring stretch now to the left leg. Stabilize your armpits up while you get a little wild with your back leg. Continue to lift the right leg over toward the left without the collapsation of the armpit. So keep both armpits level. And breathe. Exhale. Right leg forward to lunge. Come up, hands to hips. 
Stabilize. Pull your legs in toward the middle. Clasp your hands and stretch your shoulders back. Elbows straight. Good. Because there's activity going on in the shoulders, it's going to be a little less stable in the legs. So to compensate, squeeze your legs toward the middle. We strive for stability, a little security, a little certainty during this time in life. And then squeeze your shoulder blades together, arm bones back, and then begin to arch back. Good. Release your arms. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, touch. Go back to downward dog pose and breathe. Okay. Now left leg up. Wild dog. Bend the knee. Lift the knee up over toward the right. All the while, hug in. Pull up from hands to the heart. And keep both armpits evenly lifted. And then press back through the base of the right shin. Base of the shin is right at the ankle. Okay, get a little more wild. To get more wildness, you have to increase stability. Remember, we don't want too much stability, then life is no fun at all. It's just routine and rigid. But we don't want too much freedom either. Too much freedom leads to a hangover <laughs> the next day. Moderation, moderation, moderation. Exhale, lunge your left leg forward, squeeze your legs, come up hands to hips. Settle in now, feel the earth beneath you, scissor your legs toward the middle, hug muscles to bones. That not only stabilizes us, but it protects the joints, which we're gonna need when we go into dancer pose. Clasp your hands, but in the reverse position. Just reverse your fingers, the order of your fingers. And then take your shoulders back. We're going to need this um, stretch in the shoulders when we do Nataraja. So that's why we're doing it here in the warm up. Our bones go back, lift your heart more. Now, can you take your head back? Get a little free, just sort of play the edge here. Hug in with stability. Lift your heart, go back with freedom. Good. And release, arms up, inhale. Exhale, sweep your arms down. Come into plank. Lower down to chaturanga, thighs back, tailbone in, hold. Get a little wild here, head of the arm bones back. Hold, come on, hold, pull your ribs in. Exhale, let it go. Point your toes back. Now stabilize your legs. The whole lower body stays earthbound. Hug your legs to the middle. Roll your thighs in, tailbone in. And then inhale, come up cobra. And don't just push your hands. Pull your palms backwards. It's good. Head of the arm bones back. Squeeze the shoulder blades into the back of the heart. And then grow your spine long from pelvis through legs and from your pelvis up through your heart and really sort of puff the chest like the cobra, puff the back of the head like a cobra, lift the back of the skull upward. Good, reach for a little more freedom, but stay stable in the earth. And exhale, release slowly. And come back into puppy dog pose, onto downward dog pose. And then step by step, walk in. Root to your feet, bend your knees, and inhale, come up Utkatasana. Feet parallel, knees parallel, hug your shins, and then push your sitting bones apart. Keep your knees wide, sitting bones apart. Then pull your tailbone in, armpits back. Hold. From your pelvis, we're down through your feet, into the earth. Inhale, rise. Exhale. And release. So I hope you feel a little more warmed up now. Let's work on balance, because Nataraja is, after all, we're going to go on one leg. I mean, we could just sort of practice the Nataraja. So, which hand is this? Okay, so 
here it is. So bend your right knee, lift your left leg up, cross, and then your um, right, your left left hand is over, and your right hand is like this. Okay, so that that is. I wasn't planning to do this one, but hey, it's a good balancer. So focus your gaze about six feet in front of you down on the floor. Stay steady now in the right leg. Exhale, release. Shift your weight to the left. Focus your gaze, right knee up and over. Yeah, he does. He's got a little twist going on. And then the left leg and the left arm go in the same direction, but the right arm, what's this right hand? This is a mudra called Abhaya Mudra, which means have no fear. And this is the arm of concealment. Yes, your heart is concealed. We can't know everything, but hey, chill. It's supposed to be that way. This is the dance. Bend your knee, stabilize on the left leg. Very good. Even though the heart is concealed, the, this lifted leg, this is the leg of freedom, leg of grace. The foot is called the, the lifted foot of grace. Okay, so you good. St stamp down on that ego. <laughs> yeah, push it. Good. And inhale, come up. And exhale, release, shake your arms out. Let's balance again, tree pose, vrikshasana. Shift your weight to the right, and then bring your left foot up to the side of your thigh. And this one is really great, so keep your gaze focused. It's gonna help with the balance. Everything hugs into the middle. That's how you create stability. Squeeze the midline, foot to leg, leg to foot. Yeah. Your skin becomes like bark of the tree. Stabilize, shoulders back. Good. Exhale, release. Shift your weight left, keep your gaze steady. And bring your right foot in to the thigh. Either above or below the knee is fine. We're just doing this, not so much for the technique, but for the practice of balance. Get your bearings. You're as stable in yourself as you are in the unknown. So we work to stabilize ourselves so we can hold our center, even in the unknown, in the chaos, in the uncertainty. And exhale, release. All right, let's go to the wall. Here comes Shiva, here comes Nataraja. So we want to get to the wall, about legs distance or a little further from the wall. So once we come up, we don't have that far to go to reach and hold the wall. So if you need a little more security, get closer to the wall, but then you're going to have less stretch in the pose. So it's a balance, but you can adjust as we go. Balance on your right foot now. Bend your left knee. Hold the left ankle, just on the outside of the ankle. And if you are not able to hold your balance here, get a little closer to the wall and touch. If you can balance, keep your weight on the right leg. And then hold the ankle, bring your thighs parallel. Turn your left toes out to the side, just a little bit. Okay, and spread your toes. Hug into the middle now. There's your stability. Now, right arm up, inhale. And then as you exhale, push your foot back into your hands like a half bow. And bend from the hip, come forward, and land your hand at the wall. And that will help. Now let's work the back leg. Inner rotate the left thigh. So the inner left thigh, the inseam of the left thigh, will lift, and in that sense, you bring your left hip forward more. So we don't want the hips to roll way out, I and mean, there's lots of variations, but in this one, we try to keep the hips more square. Take your left shoulder back more, lift your knee a little bit higher. Good. And then your ribs turn square to the front, so you turn your ribs to the right. So the inner left thigh goes up, but the ribs go to the right, arm bones back, hold, and then see if you can come off the wall with your hand. 
and balance. Hold the wall as needed. From the pelvis now, root down through your foot and out through the left toes. And from the pelvis, rise all the way up through your head and out through your fingers. Good. Inhale and release the pose. That's invigorating. There is a different hand position you can use. That's a little more challenging. Let's try it on side two. Okay, balance, left leg. If that was really easy for you to balance, back away from the wall a bit. If that was more challenging, you're wobbling and falling, get a little closer to the wall. Bend the right knee, hold the ankle. So the thighs parallel. Inner rotate the thighs, pull your tailbone down. Turn your toes out. Breathe, hug with stability and toward the midline. All right, so here's the different hand position. You supinate the hand and you hold the inner edge of the foot with your palm up. Okay, so release the leg for a second. Here's supination. Okay, so you could try to hold your foot as you rotate your arm in, right? But that'd be backwards. So you have to open your palm, externally rotate the whole arm and keep it out like this, and then hold the inner edge of your foot. That's gonna open up the shoulder more. If that's too challenging, hold the outer ankle like we did on side one. Okay, here we go. Stretch your left arm up, push your right foot back into your hand, hinge from your hip, go to the wall to get secure with the balance and then push your foot back into your hand. Lift the inner edge of, your, of the right leg. That's really the, the technical piece that's more challenging. And as you lift the inner edge of your right leg, the right hip should come forward more. Yep, so you stabilize the hips. Twist left, keep your left armpit back, pull the right shoulder back, yep. And then go up even more, lift your right toes up more. Great, and for those who wanna to try to balance, you could bring your left hand away from the wall for a second or two. Good. And exhale, release. Well done. Come into Uttanasana, fold. Both feet now firmly on the floor lightly touch the floor or blocks with your fingers and take your thighs back pull your heels backwards and then bow find the perfect balance of freedom and stability and breathe bend your knees squat down and then gently come back into a seated position we're going to sit for a moment and you can close your eyes. Sit up tall, feel the, the flow of energy in your body. And then breathe into your heart. In the heart is the place where stability and freedom meet. They dance and swirl. It's where the universal and the individual meet. We are both human and divine. Nataraja and the pose Natarajasana brings together a sense of stability and freedom to help us learn that we do forget and that's all fine. There's a blessing in forgetfulness. We forget so that we can remember again and we take such joy and delight in remembering who we are and that we're connected to a much bigger energy. And bring your palms together in front of your heart. Imagine one hand is stability, one hand is freedom, and they come together in harmony, in balance. Nataraja is asking us always, really life is asking us, will you dance with me today? And the response is always yes. 
In the dance of grace, let's take a breath now and chant Om. Om. Namaste. The dancer in me bows to the dancer in you. Have a joyous day today, a balance of freedom and stability. Thanks for joining me. See you again soon. Bye.